Greetings once again. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Our talk today focuses on the 2170 battery, Tesla's semi-secret weapon. Bonjour, wie geht's? Wie steht's noch immer aus Fahrbeinen? Strasvice. Ni hao ma. Guten Tag. And buongiorno. Thanks for taking time one out once again uh, to visit with us regarding the 2170 battery that's now being produced by the Gigafactory of Tesla. So there is an open question in terms of Elon Musk is arguing that um, the stock will be worth 10 times as much as it currently is within five years. And one of the question marks was how are they going to achieve that given difficulties like well-heeled competitors that are waiting to enter the marketplace, etc. After studying what's going on with the 2170 battery, I think I have some understanding of what this is about. And I think that it's worth understanding, particularly if you're interested in truck products, but, but also interested in all of Tesla's products. So the news is that uh, Tesla has begun preparing battery packs as of late June of 2017 for the introduction of the Model 3. That vehicle will use the new 2170 battery, which is 21 millimeters by 70 millimeters. It's slightly larger than its predecessor, but the secret or weapon about this product is that it, it offers 30% more density um, and the, the relative size is a small change in size. So the formulation, et cetera, that's being done with this battery is unique such that it introduces um, what I think is a, a pretty impressive con competitive transition for the company. One of the other data points, there are many data points associated with this that affects the company and the stock price. One of them is that uh, the new 2170 will not be used on the Model X or the Model S based on the fact that only the 2170 is being produced at the new plant and that Model X and S will not be using it. It's clear that Tesla is continuing to produce this battery at their, uh, in their partnership with Panasonic in Japan and have this shipped to California for installation. I also was intrigued by this because there are certain variables with the 2170 that make it appropriate for the semi-truck goals that Elon Musk has, as well as for the Model 3. When it comes to the Model 3, the issue that lurks, and it, it's hard to get your hands fully around this, and we'll be finding that out for sure in the next 45 days, but in theory, if you're getting 30% um, if you will, cheaper uh, batteries that do the same thing, this allows you to re lower your break-even point. Another way you could use this advantage is you could theoretically lower weight, same amount of battery, lower weight, and so now you get a better performing car is another way you could use this battery advantage. When it comes to trucks, every ounce of weight is another ounce of freight that you can carry. So one of the interesting elements of calculations related to the semi that made the assumption that it could not be done is that all of the weight assumptions for the semi have been focused on the preceding battery. And with this battery ending up being 30% more efficient, basically you can lower your weight by 30% and still have the same impact in terms of its storage capacity and ability to help your truck get that distance. So if we look at the current numbers on what most folks think the truck could do under the old battery, it was probably a 250 to 300 mile range that might go with the 8165 preceding battery. Now that we've improved by 30%, what this means is you now have a semi-battery that can go a legit 500 miles, which is about the distance between stops 
that long distance truckers are allowed. So I believe this is a semi-secret weapon because no one's really seen it in heavy use. I'm told that to date it's being used in, in the power walls uh, products and other sort of customer deliveries in that regard, but it has not currently in a car or truck sitting setting for us to understand how that might impact things. I also, you know, Elon Musk is sort of laser focused on the long haul semi trucks, which is greater than 250 miles. And based on what the old battery could do and its implementation by Mercedes um, at customer sites and the fact that the customer has been really happy with that, you know, it's my belief now that you have a 30% lighter battery, you have some customers that would be jumping out the building dying to get a hold of this because that's just more freight that can be hauled uh, and, and without any battery anxiety, but it just gives the, the end user customers a lot more flexibility in terms of how to use their trucks. So I think that this uh, 2170, you could call it uh, a three or four hundred billion dollar game changer because what you're looking at when it comes to a Tesla truck, particularly in a long haul setting, is that the average long haul truck at six miles a gallon, if that mileage is pushed up by Tesla into that 20 mile range uh, per gallon for those large vehicles, uh, that's a huge difference in the cost impact. Um, and it, it permits uh, large companies uh, not only to make the shift, but if they don't make the shift, they could go out of business to competitors that are able to get supply uh, of these batteries and the trucks that come from them. A, a question I don't have the answer to that I'm fascinated by is back to my earlier comments on my earlier video about the power weight ratio of, of the Model 3. If in fact the battery does what it says it does, which is 30% um, better density. Um, it'll be interesting to see t how Tesla manages the competitive threat of the Model 3 against the Model S and the Model X because um, in theory everyone was considering the Model 3 to come in at about 3,700 pounds but if this battery per permits um, a lighter vehicle you could end up with the car coming in in the 3,000 pound or less zone uh, versus a Model S at 5,000 pounds. So in theory, you could have a car that's half the weight of a Model S, but equal, you know, in the 200, 250 mile range capability. And that's a really impressive, you know, combination. And I can see now why it's starting to affect sales of the S. So it'll be interesting to see what Tesla does to diminish the performance so they don't wipe out S sales. I, I will be exploring more with the 2170 as we learn more. Um, in essence, uh, we're gonna find out more as the trucks are delivered, how this all works. But I can definitely see what Elon Musk is talking about because if you end up with a Model 3 and instead of spending 15,000 on the battery, you're spending someplace in the range of nine or $10,000 for the battery. We're starting to see how they can move to getting 22% margins on their Model 3, as well as the same margin they have on the, the Model S. The one other data point that came through, courtesy of the CFO of Tesla, is the fact that their agenda is to continue a 5% increase in this uh, each year. So by the time trucks are coming to scale, in theory, you could end up with like a 40% uh, you know, lowering of the weight of those battery packs and therefore increasing their range and ability to haul heavy freight. A lot to think about here. A lot of interesting things to unpack. Looking forward to your comments and input. Thank you for taking time out. Please like and subscribe. Um, 
and you know the final note on this is that if if this all works, um, it's worth two or three hundred billion dollars in market cap because nobody else is delivering something like this in the next year or two at scale. So it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out relative to the growth in stock price of Tesla. Thanks again for taking time out. Merci beaucoup. Uh, das vidanya. Um, la hit road. Choda hafez. And um, look forward to our next conversation. Thanks. Like and subscribe.